What's up YouTube? In today's video, I'll be showing you how to connect multiple Raspberry Pi Pico W's over the internet using MQTT, which is a really common protocol to connect IoT devices. In this case, our IoT device is the Raspberry Pi Pico W. And by the end of this video, you will be able to send messages to different Raspberry Pi Pico W's and share information between multiple Raspberry Pi Pico W's for uh, distributed systems. And this works for any internet connection, any network you have, as long as your device is able to connect to the internet somewhere, you can share messages from different Raspberry Pi Pico W's all over the world if you'd like. So we'll be using MicroPython, we'll be using the Thani ID, and we'll be using the MQTT broker, and that is the Hive MQ broker. Everything is free in this video to get started, and all you need is more than one Raspberry Pi Pico W, an internet connection, and let's jump into it. Okay, to get started, the first thing you want to do is you want to have Thani installed. I would imagine you already have it installed. It's really easy to install. You just go to Thani org and install it and next thing you want to do is you want to open a Thani instance by just simply clicking the Thani app and opening it and connecting to one of the devices so I currently have two devices connected to my computer via the USB but uh, in reality if you want to do this with more than one computer and a device connected to another computer it should be the same thing but because I only have one computer in front of me for this YouTube video I'm just gonna show how we can do this with one computer so I'm working on one computer and I want to open another Thani instance for my other Raspberry Pi Pico W so I have this one here and in order to do that the first thing we want to do is we want to go to tools I actually showed this in a previous video and want to go to general and want to go to uncheck this so I already unchecked it allow only single Thani instance. This will allow us to open more than one Thani instance. So I clicked OK. And what you have to do after this is restart the app. I already restarted it. And you should have the ability to create more than one instance. So on a Mac, how you want to do that is you want to go to the terminal and you want to run this command here to open a new Thani instance. Now on a Windows or a Linux, I believe you can simply double click the Thani logo here and it should open another one or there's probably a similar path, which I don't know at the top of my head. But this is what we're doing on a Mac. So we're just going to type this in the terminal and click enter. Okay, perfect, and we're just going to select the other device. So now we have the code on the other device. This is the device I mainly code on. And then we're going to go back to the other one, which is the second one we're going to use to send messages from one to the other. But in reality, you can use more than one, and you could use even dozens of Raspberry Pi Pico W's with this methodology I'm about to show you. Enough being said, let's jump into the Hive MQ broker to show you how to get that started online and once we have that set up we'll jump into the code okay to get started with the hive mq broker it's really easy we just want to go to hivemq.com slash mqtt dash cloud dash broker and we want to create a cloud uh, instance of this mqtt broker so to do that we just click try out for free i already have an account so what it's going to do is it's simply going to go to my dashboard here and I already have a cluster. This is free to get started. You do not need any billing information, which is nice. And you have a lot of storage and compute power to work with from the get go, which is pretty cool. I've been using this for a long time for testing purposes. So once you have a cluster created, you want to go to manage cluster and you want to go to access management and create a user. I already have a user with a password and you want to make sure to save that information. You actually need three bits of information to use this in MicroPython. You need the cluster URL and you need the user and the, the password for that user. And it shows you all the data you have here. And that's pretty much all you need to get started with Hive MQ. It is a really common broker and it's nice because it's really easy to get started. There are other brokers out there that you can look into once you get more experienced or if you are more experienced, you can certainly go with other um, brokers online or even uh, local uh, instances of MQTT that you can develop yourself. But for this video, we're just going to talk about HiveMQ because it's really powerful and it's perfect for this application. So enough being said, let's jump into the code to start using this broker for our Raspberry Pi Pico W's. Okay, so jumping back to Thani to demonstrate the code for these Raspberry Pi Pico W's to get started with this. The first thing we actually want to do is we want to go and we want to go to the home directory of our Raspberry Pi Pico W and we want to insert a new file. What is going on here? Why is it saying that nonsense? Okay, we want to go to lib and we want to go to, we actually want to create a folder called umqtt and insert the fo following two files. So this is library code I found online. I couldn't download it from the managed packages, but I'll link them in the description down below and you simply have to insert them in a lib folder under your under your home directory, so lib, u, mqtt, and insert these two files. And that is the library code we need to get started with MQTT on our Raspberry Pi Pico W. So do this on every respective Raspberry Pi Pico W you're working with. And now for the first one, what we're going to do is, the first device we're gonna have is it's going to publish data to the MQTT broker. So that one's going to publish it. And the other device we're going to have is it's going to read that data that's being published. Okay, so that's, that's how we're going to do this uh, demonstration here. So let's go back to the home directory here. 
And let's go to this tester, which I already created. And actually it's this MQTT demo, sorry. And I have this demo.py, which contains all the code we need to actually do this. And so I'm just gonna move this down here to go through some of this code at a high level. Really, you can name it anything you want. So I just call it demo.py and it does have to be a Python file. So we want some imports here. So we need a network to connect to the internet because we absolutely do need an internet connection. We're using time for some other uh, internet connection handling. So, you know, we're timing out after a certain time. And what we can do is we can wait certain intervals to publish data. So the time library is very useful for MQTT for that regard. Another thing we're doing here is we're importing the simple library, the one I just discussed. So just say from UMQTT simple import MQTT clients. And the next thing we want to do is we want to import constants. The constants file I have is just sensitive information such as the host name and the user and password I created under access management in the, the Hive MQ uh, cloud management. So you wanna be sure to try to hide that information, especially if this is on a public repo. So this code I'll be posting online. So I don't want my, my server host name, my user password, just in case there's someone out there who wants to you know, maliciously use my information. Hopefully none of you guys are like that, but there are people out there who will you know, do that maybe just for fun. So just be careful, never post those sensitive information on a GitHub account, especially not a public one. So the first thing here is I just define this function which we're defining an MQTT client and I'm creating a client ID, which can be really whatever you want. I just called it Mahmoud, which is my name. And then the server, it just goes to, from the, the constants file, which is just the server on your Hive MQ account, which is the first thing you see, it should be like a big server link URL, which should be your server host name. Finally, the port is zero, which is fine. And then we have the user and password. Keep live SSL and params. You can just define them as this. I'm not gonna go into the details of this in this video because it's beyond the scope of it, but just know you define them as uh, 7,200 true and we pass in the server host name again. And finally, we initiate a, a connection. So if we did everything right on the Hive MQ side in terms of information, uh, we should be able to run this function and have a client ready to go. Next thing we have is this connect to internet function. I went over this in a bunch of YouTube videos. This is just a function to connect to the internet given a internet name and password. So if you just copy this code, and you go through this, it just waits some time to connect to the internet because sometimes it takes some time to connect to the internet. And if you did everything right with your internet name and password, you should be able to call this function and connect to the internet. So typically you wanna, well, you have to connect to the internet before you can actually connect to a broker. So you do need this function and you have to instantiate that before you instantiate this, okay? So we have this make connections, which, which simply calls um, connect to the internet and it returns a connect MQTT. So we connect to the internet and we return a client from this function here, okay? And then we have this publish function, okay? So this one's probably the most important part because this de this defines the topic. So in MQTT, you have topics which you're publishing to. So by publish means you're just sending a, a form of data. So a new, let's say you have a table and every time you publish something, imagine the topic is the table and imagine this is a, a one column table where it's just data points. So you are just publishing a value every time you go to publish to this column. So a new row, new row, new row, every time you go to publish and the table's name is topic, okay? So you can name it whatever you want. So the topic can be whatever you want. The value can be whatever you want. For this case, I believe it has to be a string. So I think we're constrained by using this broker to, it has to be a string, but if you do need an integer, you can just do some quick manipulation between string and integer, which should be fairly quick. But maybe there are some other techniques, I don't know, that you can, post to Hive MQ with integers, but that's, um, I don't know that at the top of my head. And the next thing you have is the client. So you actually have to pass this client and this client was created right here. So this is our client, right? So we, we call it from this function. So this is just a function I defined by the way. So the first thing we do once we have all these functions defined is we create an actual client by calling make connections, which just gives us the client object. And then while true, we publish data to that topic. So the topic is called topic, not very creative. And the message is called test message, also not very creative. And finally, the client is just the client object we created there. So if I go ahead and run this, we should start publishing to the clients. And I'm just gonna give it like a time.sleep for the sake of not overloading the, the client with garbage data. So let's do one. I think it's either one millisecond or we'll see right now. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and run this. So if I did everything correct, I should start seeing data being published. So every second you can see it's being published. And to confirm that we're getting that data from the client, I'm gonna have my other Raspberry Pi Pico W. Instead of publishing to this topic, it's going to read from this topic. So let's jump into that in this next segment. Okay, so jumping into the other instance where we have our other Raspberry Pi Pico W code. So it's very similar. So first off, the first thing you need is the same libraries. So in lib, umqtt, and the two files, robust.py, simple.py, you can just copy those again. And we also have the constants.py file, which is personal preference. I just put my sensitive information there. And then we have this demo2.py. You can name this whatever you want. I just called it demo2. And this contains the code we need to subscribe. So it's very similar on first sight here. So we have the same imports. We have the same connect MQTT. A notable thing you have to do in this connect you and this connect MQTT function is you have to define a different client ID. Because if you try to do the same client ID, this is not allowed and you will get an error in the library. So you know, I did have some issues doing that initially. You do have to have a different client, but everything else is the same. You can have the same user and password as well. So you don't have to worry about that. And we have the connect to internet, which is the same function as well. And we have the make connections function, which is also the same, which just generates the client object. The notable difference here in this code is this callback and this subscribe function that I defined. And what's happening first is you actually have to define a callback to get messages in this library. So you have to pass a callback using the set callback method to the client and pass in the callback function. So it's really simple. And that just defines how you want the topic and the response displayed based on your preference. So I just passed receive message on topic and response, but you can do whatever you want here in this callback function. I kept it really simple for the sake of this video. And we have the subscribe function where you pass in a topic and you pass in a client and we just do the subscribe method. So client dot subscribe topic and we just subscribe once. That's all you have to do is just do it once. And then we create a client by calling the make connections as we did in the previous example. We set the callback to the callback function and then we call the subscribe function based on the clients. And finally, if you did everything correct, you should be able to run a continuous while loop where you continuously check messages. So if you are getting messages on that topic, it will just display them every five seconds, okay? So let's go ahead and run that because we know we are running the other client who is actually publishing. And in this case, we should start to see the messages. So hopefully we see them. So let's go ahead and run that. Takes a little bit, you know, a few seconds, maybe 10 seconds. Based on, okay, cool. So we are getting the message in bytes. So that's a notable thing. It does publish them in bytes because I think it's using some socket uh, system. So you would have to decode those if you actually want the string itself. But overall, you know, this looks like pretty cool how we got messages from another Raspberry Pi Pico W. And what's even cooler is I just want to reiterate the fact that that Pico doesn't have to be on the local network. It can be somewhere else across the world. And as long as we have an active internet connection, we can actually get messages from that Raspberry Pi Pico W. And we can also incorporate many other Raspberry Pi Pico Ws to have a truly large distributed system, which many people who are watching this video are probably interested in. So that pretty much clears it for this video. If you have any questions about what we did here, or if you have any suggestions of what you want to see on the channel, please let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, you guys stay tuned and thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.